next seven Caillou challenge is called return the closest number multiple of 10. Given a number, return the closest number to it that is divisible by 10. Example input 22, 25, 37 maps to the expected output 20, 30, 40. And you can probably see uh, 22 gets rounded down to 20, 25 goes up to 30, and 37 goes up to 40 with sort of that um, generally accepted way of rounding where if you're at five or higher you go up so yeah I think that's easy to understand I think if you've been with me you're more than well equipped to knock this one out I'll go over a couple ways of doing it but neither one is very involved um, so go ahead and pause and come on back when you're ready okay first solution I'm going to use the modulo operator like we've used in the past to strip the ones place digit off and then I'm going to look at that value and make the determination of whether I should round up or down and then return the appropriate output. So you could do something like int let's call it last digit right which is simply the num modulo 10. Uh, remember modulo acts just like division but instead of giving you the quotient which you normally get with division, you get the remainder value. So 22 modulo 10 would be 22 divided by 10, and then you just take the two that's left over, right? You'd have 22 divided by 10 would be two with a remainder of two. So good. Um, now we've stored this value two here in this last digit. And then we could sort of make some logic to decide whether to round up or down based on that value. So we could say last digit is less than five, right? That means to round down. And I'm gonna use that ternary expression we've been learning about just as a shorthand here. You could use an if else statement if you're more comfortable with that or you like that better. So if it's less than five, we need to round uh, down. And you can do that. I'm just gonna return here. Um, we'll return num, which would be 22 in the first case, minus the last digit, right? And that would give you the value of 20 that you want. And if you want to consider other examples besides uh, 22, you can make up ones, 43, anything under, you know, the midpoint, if you're looking at rounding down. And then we add our colon to add our other case, right? Anything after the colon is our other case that applies when last digit is not less than five, which means it's greater than or equal to five. And that means round up, right? So how do we figure out how much to round up? Well, that would be the difference between 10 and your last digit, right? So uh, let's take a round up example like 25. If I do 10 minus the last digit, the last digit's five, that's going to give me a value of 5, and then I just got to add that to num, right? And let's try it with 37 to see if it works too. Last digit 7, we take 10 minus 7, which is 3. Then we take num 37, add 3 to it, and you get 40. So that should work out too. I suspect uh, this should work, but we'll run it through the gauntlet, right? First the test. Hit the attempt, and looks good. If you want to cram it all in one line, you can uh, sub in num modulo 10 for each occurrence of last digit, but I'm not that bent on stuffing everything on one line. Uh, so, okay, cool. You can be done here. Thought I'd go over just another way of looking at the problem, because what could it hurt, right? And these solutions aren't that involved. Let's try it another way. So for this second approach, I'm going to try to use the built-in uh, math library, its round function, which I believe we've used before. But if not, that's fine. We'll take a look at it. And, and the idea is, is that I'm going to convert the input number to a double. Then I'm going to divide it by 10 to put that ones, what was the ones place digit into a decimal slot. Then I'm going to call math round on it. And then I'm going to convert it back to um, its original form. So that's how I'll use the, the rounding. 
So um, let's let's do that. I'll convert this to a double, and so I'll just call mine two double equals num divided by ten. And what's the first catch here, right? Well, we know that num is an integer, and so if I do integer arithmetic, it's going to truncate, and it's not going to give us what we want. So in that first case, uh, 22 divided by 10, you're just going to get the 2. That kind of discards any fractional part. So let's make sure we cast one of these to a double. As long as some um, operand in the expression is double, it doesn't matter if the rest are integers, um, we'll get a double result. So that's good. We get it to double. So now if I have 22, we'll say, and I convert it to 22.0 or just as a double, you know, now it's got a floating point component. Divide that by 10, I should go down to 2.2, right? That's what we have in two double is 2.2. Good. Now I'll use the math round class on that. So I could say uh, math round. We'll take a look at this. And I'm going to do it not quite right first, but how you may have used this. If you've used round in the past, you probably are only aware of the one overload. So we'll start there. Math round, right? And for that, we'll pass in our argument, which should round it. And then I'll multiply that value uh, by 10. So in our case, um, if round works the way we think it should, you gave it 2.2, it'll round down to 2.0, right? And then we could simply return, make sure we cast it to an integer um, like that, because we need an integer result. And it should take that 2.0 and convert it to just the integer too. But this isn't quite right as we'll see, there's some subtle problems here. So look, it started off nicely from 10 to 14 and 15 to 20. And then we hit some trouble here, right? Expected 2010, but was 2000. So it very much looks like um, it rounded down in a case where it shouldn't have, right? So that's not good. Well, if we go look at math round, I'm in the, the common overload where you just give it a double. Rounds a double precision floating point value to the nearest integral value and rounds midpoint values to the nearest even number. Uh, nearest even number. And then we can go look at an example of this. They have a good one below. Where was it? Here it is. This is kind of a nice little um, warning they say because of the loss of precision that can result from representing decimal values as floating point numbers and or performing arithmetic operations on floating point values, which we did. In some cases, round double may not appear to round midpoint values to the nearest even integer. The following example, uh, because the floating point value is 0.1, see, and it has no finite binary representation. The first call the random double method with a value of 11.5 returns 11 instead of 12. So you can see the output here, right? 11.5 got rounded to 11. They were doing some kind of adding here by plus 0.1 each time it's called. It's called five times. But you got a different result when you just set the value directly to 11.5 and passed it in, which is a little disturbing and not necessarily what you want. So if we go back to the top, um, we'll notice that there are some overloads here. Look at this. Instead of just passing the double, we've got this weird midpoint rounding thing. Well, what's that? We'll take a look. Rounds a double precision floating point value to an integer using the specified rounding convention. So you've got some options there. Let's see what our options are. Midpoint rounding. Uh, here we go. Here's a link for it. So you've got some options, check this out. Away from zero to even to negative infinity, positive and to zero. You're always rounding towards zero. And you'll see to even, the strategy of rounding to the nearest number, 
When a number is halfway between the two, it is rounded to the nearest even number. Um, that's not necessarily what I want, right? When it's halfway between, I want to go up, whether that up is represents an even or an odd number. That's what I'm looking for. And if you read away from zero, uh, that's what you get. The strategy of rounding to the nearest number, when halfway, it's rounded towards the nearest number that's away from zero, meaning going up, we're dealing with positive numbers, but if we had negatives, it would go down, which is also good. So I'm gonna add this overload here, see if we can make this right. So we've got, um, we can add that optional parameter, midpoint rounding, and that was called away from zero. Let's see if we can make things right. And there you go. Uh, now it works the way we wanted to. So yes, yeah, sometimes it worked out right where we were going to an even number before, but this really um, made explicit what kind of rounding behavior we wanted. And so if you've used round before, maybe you didn't even realize you had this option. So hopefully that um, brought some value to you. Uh, as far as which one of these I'm going to return, um, Let's do, should we do the first one or the second one? Let's do the first one. I'll do that one. We'll hit the attempt again, should be green, nothing changed. And I'll go ahead and submit, get your points, you earned them. Even if you didn't quite make it through all the way on your own, you still worked through it and learned something. Collect those points. And then yeah, go ahead and look through um, you can see they use that. Look through and see if there's anything else you can learn from other people too. Don't limit your learning. Otherwise, let me know what you came up with. Hit me up with questions, comments, feedback. I love it all. Otherwise, I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.